We are, we are moving towards a cashless society, but who benefits, us or the authoritative systems that seek to control us? <laughs> Hello there, you 6.5 million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining us on this voyage to truth and freedom, or potentially authoritarian centralized systems with digital currencies that can be switched off if you don't do exactly as you're told whenever you're told it. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe right now. Perhaps you think a cashless society is a pipe dream, something long in the making, a sci-fi fantasy that could never be induced, something that democracy could prevent, that we could bind together, band together and oppose. Well, it's already being piloted in Australia. And we know from the trucker protest that whilst digital currency in their current form do provide alternative to centralized authoritative financial models. If we have a world currency controlled by governments, it would become a crucial component in a Chinese social credit score dystopia. Let's have a look at the pilot model that's already being implemented in Australia. And remember how Australia carried on during the pandemic. Well, concerns are growing for senior citizens with more and more banks going cashless. Yes, banks going cashless. Over-the-counter transactions are no longer available at some Commonwealth bank branches, with cash only available through ATMs. For more, we're joined by the Chief Operating Officer of National Seniors Australia, Chris Grice. Thanks so much for your time, Chris. What I like about Chris is he's brought on to talk about cashless societies from the perspective of senior citizens in Australia, but he strays into all sorts of extraordinary territory. You would only get this on Australian news. A cashless trend, what's going on? Well, we're not only sort of seeing uh, cash cash being sort of, I guess, removed from, uh, from the economy. But uh, we're seeing, obviously, uh, a deliberate uh, play to transition everybody over to, uh, to digital transactions. Uh, 2030, they're removing checks from circulation. Mm. Uh, so there's a, 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 big, uh, a big shift to, uh, to getting people off cash. And also, to get cash, um, they've got to pay for it as well. We're seeing more and more transaction fees uh, being added onto, uh, onto their accounts if they want to access cash, in particular through ATMs that aren't necessarily provided by uh, the big banks. Does this remind you of the kind of behavioural nudging that took place during the pandemic? They're making it more difficult to get cash. They're charging you to access cash and they're already eliminating checks. These things look like incremental changes in order to create more convenience or more security. But it seems that there is an agenda being pursued that generates more profit, but more significantly forecloses on the possibility of transactions without centralised authority having the ability to intervene. And I guess there's a lot of work that needs to happen happen in terms of educating and informing senior Australians in terms of being able to operate uh, with, you know, using their smartphones and these apps. And there's even risks around that. I mean, the, uh, the, the organisation you're talking about that's sort of making, uh, making this change, uh, they had a, an outage on their app, which mm. basically lasted a day. Presumably what's being described there is a legitimate outage that happened for technical reasons. But the simple fact is, is that during that 24 hours, no one had access to currency. So in a society where there is no cash, there is no alternative, you could suddenly find yourself with no access to cash, no ability to alternatively transact or trade. And potentially these outages could happen at will, at whim to individuals or whole sectors of society. Don't you increasingly get the sense these days that ideas are piloted. What happens if you tell everybody just to stay in their homes? What happens to everybody if you just deny them access to cash? If you live in a society where crisis, scarcity and denial are advantageous to systems of authority and systems of power, financial systems of power, governmental systems of power, you could find that increasingly crises are used to manage a population. All centralised systems of authority are open, yes, to flaws and inadvertent access accidents and outages, but also they're open to manipulation. They can easily become tools of social control, as this example demonstrates. So folk who were using the app, uh, it indicated zero balance, no money in their account, and, uh, and they weren't able to access their money um, for uh, an entire day, basically. So suddenly you just look at your bank account and it says there's no money there. I mean, that's plausible. Don't you have that kind of fear anyway, that at any point your bank could just go, no, we've lost all your money, it's gone. What these schemes present is the institutionalization of systems where it is possible that overnight your money could disappear. Your ability to trade, transact, and indeed 
eat could be taken away from you. And so that forced people back into the branches and, uh, and long queues to just get access to what's, what's their, their money. Post-pandemic, it seems that we're being introduced more and more to situations where we're invited to tolerate more intervention and more control more crisis. The whole goal of civilization has always been comfort, convenience, safety. Pay your taxes, we'll look after you. And look at all of the abundant products you have access to. Once that model and that paradigm starts to shake and break down, I believe it's an opportunity and a necessity, in fact, to reevaluate the whole condition of our culture. Because what we're being told now is not that things are going to get increasingly better and more and more convenient. We're told you're going to live in smart cities where you can only travel within a 50 minute area. We're going to have currencies that can be switched off either by accident or at will. You're going to have passports that control your movement. All of these ideas are being subtly introduced simultaneous to surveillance and censorship. In essence, freedom is being reduced and minimised and sold to us as convenience. Yeah, it's a brave new world with a few glitches along the way. Chris, thanks so much for your insight. Absolutely, thank you. There's a few glitches in this brave new world, like you're starving to death in an endless queue trying to get your hands on your own money, staring at a zero in your bank account and a husk of old bread in your other hand. That's a glitch. Also, the title of Brave New World was sarcastic and ironic. It's not aspirational. Let's go and live in the brave new world. Those people were miserable. They lived in pods. They were imprisoned and they were on a drug that kept them all stupid. Oh. A Commonwealth Bank spokesperson has told today the Commonwealth Bank has created a very small number of specialist centres in major metropolitan areas which are designed to support personal and business customers with more complex banking needs. Goes on to say all of our specialist centres are in major metropolitan locations and very nearby to full-service franchises. Do you see how they're subtly reframing the concept of what a bank is? This is a specialist centre. It's not a specialist centre. I gave you my money. Can I have it back, please? No, you'll have to go to the specialist centre and have a very special conversation. Here's a special conversation. Give me my fucking money back. Do you see how they're subtly reorganising and redefining what our relationship is with institutions that used to be regarded as a service? Suddenly you have banks that can switch off your money or don't want to look after your account for spurious and unusual reasons. They have the ability to shut down your ability to trade. And it's all described to you as a service. I'm beginning to think that there are crises that are used as opportunities.